Hold on to your steppers, boys and girls. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Color Fab's filament and why I think the Dutch are onto something. So this is the ColorFab Ultramarine Blue 2.85mm filament. Let's uh, crack this baby open and take a look. Now the first layer of defense is a shrink wrap. Now that came off pretty easily. And then once I got into the box, you could see, and I was surprised to see that there's no desiccant in with the shrink wrapped spool. Now the spool is clear, so you can easily see how much filament you have left, which is awesome. But I was a little bit concerned about there being no desiccant, but um, after I ended up using it, there's no concern at all. I think the double shrink wrap process keeps everything nice and dry. The printing temperature for this filament is 195 to 220, and that's pretty common for this type of PLA filament. A couple of first impressions of the ColorFab filament is that it has a satin finish when compared to some of the other filament that I've had some issues with in the past uh, that has a really shiny finish, which was kind of a, a difference. Also, you notice that the ColorFab has a much bigger arch. Now, the green filament wanted to stay in tight coils, and sometimes that caused issues in the Bowden tube. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the difference between filament that stays in tight coils like this and filament that relaxes easily when it comes off the spool like this. These are both the same length filament, it's just this one's in a really tight coil. Alright, so when you introduce a Bowden tube like this, and you try to put this coil inside of it, here, it's pretty difficult to push it in there. And as you do it, you can see that the Bowden tube starts to curve and take the shape of the filament that goes inside of it. Uh, it's kind of snaky looking now. As your extruder is trying to push and pull in that, there's a lot of friction inside this and it makes it really difficult to extrude evenly and have a nice print. So we'll take this out. And as a contrast, we'll use this filament that is already relaxed, comes off the spool, and it just slides right in there. No problem, the Bowden isn't trying to curl. Um, it's, it's really easy to slide in and out. This is the type of filament and Bowden tube combination that will get you really nice prints. All right. One of the first things that I do when I get new filament in is what I call the snap test. Now, I cut off a small section and I fold the ends over. If at any point the filament snaps in half, like this, then I know that it's too brittle to print with. This test simulates retraction while you're printing. If it's too brittle to bend back and forth, then it'll probably snap when your extruder's feeding it in and out. All right, now let's see how the color fab fares. Now we're gonna go to one end, do the same thing, fold it over. Ah, nice. It doesn't snap, it stretches, and you gotta spin it around and work with it to break it off. The color fab filament was really consistent. No matter what section I cut off and where I bent it, it had the same consistency, it was hard to bend, and I had to twist it a bunch to pull it apart. And consistency is the name of the game when it comes to filament. Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead and load some of this color fab into my printer. As you can see here, I'm sliding it through the Bowden tube to the print head. Now when you're doing this, go ahead and take note of how hard or easy it is to slide the filament through your Bowden. As you can see here, I've got two fingers, and I'm just really lightly grasping it, and I'm able to pull and push the filament very easily. If this is difficult for you, then your filament is either too thick or you have a obstruction or blockage in your Bowden or your printhead. The next step is to purge all the old filament out from the hot end. Now to do this, you heat it up about 10 degrees Celsius hotter than what you're printing with, and you let it just drool out. Once the old filament starts flowing out, go ahead and advance the new filament into it. You should start seeing a color change from the old filament to the new filament. Once you see that, keep advancing the filament until you see a solid new color. Alright, now we're set to print with the new filament. One of the last steps for changing out filament that's crucial to a good print is to measure the diameter of the filament. Now I know they give you a diameter on the box, but it's best to actually measure it. Now measure at three different points, not too close to each other, and then average them. Whatever diameter you get for that, go ahead and put that in your print settings. Now that I've set everything up for the new filament, the last thing to do is to print with it. So, of course, I chose the herringbone bearing, which is just a fun little toy to keep on my desk to play around with. And as you see, it printed out really well. There were a couple holes in the top, uh, and that was just because my temperature was too high. Nothing to do with the filament, but um, everything came out great. My post-print impression of this ColorFab filament is that it's really consistent. The diameter stays the same throughout all of the filament, so you get really consistent flow. And having a little bit smaller diameter of 2.85 means that it really goes well through the Bowden and into the hot end. It doesn't catch anything or snag. Thanks for watching my video. I hope if you're looking for a good filament, this helps solve your problems. I'm not affiliated with ClearFab in any way, but I found this product and it worked so well I just had to share it with everybody. If you want to follow me and see what else I'm up to, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook.